somewhere around 2003-ish, I was, um, I've been basically for several years living out of a suitcase, spending about nine, ten months a year on the road, uh, photographing in difficult places, seeing difficult things that I never uh, imagined that I would have to see. Um, and sort of learning to become a photographer, et cetera. But uh, sometime around 2003, I was, I was just exhausted. I was uh, physically exhausted. I was mentally exhausted. Um, and you could say that I was burnt out uh, completely. But even more importantly, I, I had sort of, you know, photography had been this thing, my, my reason to interface with the world and, and my reason to, to, to kind of explore my curiosity. And, um, and I had this, it was this thing that kind of saved me, photography was. But I was starting to lose faith in that. And I was becoming bored with it and, and really kind of unsure of why I was doing it because I never really had posed these questions to myself of why, you know, um, why I'm a war photographer, and, uh, which is not a name I ever use for myself. But I had a, a, a kind of a chance run-in with a, a toy plastic camera called a Holga camera, which I'm sure so many people in this room know, know of uh, because now... You know, everybody's made pictures with this thing. But at the time, it was, they had just started reproducing this camera and not, or fairly recently, and it was, um, it was actually kind of not easy to find one. And I had a chance encounter with, him, with one and started carrying it around. And this camera, uh, you, you couldn't control anything. You couldn't control the focus. You couldn't control uh, the, the, the light, the exposure. And, um, and it was a little bit awkward to use, and, and I... I found myself starting to make these pictures that were uh, totally liberated from control. And because I couldn't control anything, I found myself making these pictures that were purely just reactions to, to something that I was seeing, just a, a total emotional uh, response to something. And it started out as this funny little game, but almost became like the, uh, kind of a, a weird therapy or something for me, an, an exercise where I, I, would, I would only allow myself to make one frame of any given situation, and then I would move on. And I never thought about showing these pictures to anyone. I, it was never to be an artist statement of any sort, but um, I happened to be doing another book at, at the time, and, uh, and a publisher, the publisher saw these pictures and said, oh, let's do a, let's do a book with this. Um, and so it became my first book called Nonfiction. Um, and uh, the pictures you see are, wasn't intentional to have this kind of weird, messed up color, uh, but the camera leaked light and, and I was using old film or whatever. Uh, now it seems kind of mundane because now everybody's cell phone has an algorithm that reproduces exactly what you see here. But at the time it was kind of funny. And, and I saw in these pictures something that was totally separate. I mean, obviously it wasn't war, and, uh, but there was something else in the pictures that was, was purely emotional, was, was purely just the way I reacted to something and had nothing to do with quote unquote good photography. And my place that I had arrived at of being absolutely kind of bored with photography and and, and lo completely losing faith with the idea of, of good photography what was sort of repl was replaced by this idea of, of the pure joy of, of just seeing and just reacting and just responding to something. And it was through doing this, through making these pictures and seeing these pictures that I kind of found my way back to my my love for the still image for photography, but uh, also made me realize what it was I wanted my pictures to be about. And going even further into this idea of understanding that my pictures weren't necessarily about explaining something to you, and they certainly weren't about uh, an idea of, of literal fact, but they were about emotion. And 
it was through seeing this or through doing this that I realized that that's really the only thing that I cared about in photography was this emotion in the pictures. I wanted something that punched you in the gut, that was just about feeling something, that was not about the brain but just about the heart. And as I went back to my day job and the, the next body of work that I would do, um, I wanted the pictures to, to keep this idea that the pictures would be just about something that was not reporting of information, but was, uh, n it was not about telling you what someone, what, what they do, but what it feels like to be there um, and to work on a purely emotional level. And so the next work I would do was, uh, was to go to Venezuela, where I spent about four years, and this would become my, my next book called Capitolio, which came out in 2009. This is just a, a selection from, from that book. So I, I show you all of that to bring you to where I am now. Um, I feel like all of what you just saw was to prepare me for what I'm doing now, uh, which to me is my most important work of my life. and, and I mean, personally, for me, it's, 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 I like to think of it as my best work of my life, but um, uh, I really do feel like all of that was just a preparation to bring me to this point. Um, I grew up mostly in a, in a small town in, in Texas in uh, um, a conservative religious environment and, and um, although I, I love, love my family, whatever, but I, I, I kind of, I became a photographer. Um, I became who I am because I didn't want to be who I was supposed to be. And photography was my ticket to escape all of that and to go to the far corners of the earth and seek out the, the exotic on the, on the other side of the planet to escape what I had come from. And I've done that for the last, 15, 16 years, uh, and uh, about three and a half years ago, I had a, I had a, a baby. I didn't know, so, but um, I, I had a son, and uh, uh, it, as they, these things tend to do, uh, changed, a, changed a lot of things for me. And about the same time also that, it, that my child was born, that my son was born, my father became very ill. And uh, um, uh, cancer, 
and as happens, uh, I, you know, start thinking about the various, uh, very obvious themes of, of life and death, and and actually bringing my own mortality into focus in a way that is, that it has never been, that it never happened before, and and thinking about sort of um, uh, for the first time, kind of being wanting to stay home and wanting to to look at my my own life rather than the the lives of others on the other side of the planet. And uh, I began photographing my family, my father and my son, at, at first in a very organic way with no intention of doing any quote-unquote work with it. Um, but as anyone would do making making family photographs and uh, in the course of doing that, I started recognizing something else, and, and um, that this was actually developing into kind of a, a real body of work. And uh, it will be a, a book next year. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a, a love poem uh, that is a reflection on on life and very obvious themes of of. Uh, the seasonal nature of life. And uh, here it is. It's a book that will be called Sun. So uh, I want to show you one more thing, and it's the, the most recent work that I have done. Actually, somebody told me once that you know, when, you do a, when you do a talk, you should always show the very last thing you did. So here, is, here it is. Um, this summer, the, uh, the New Yorker magazine came to me and, and uh, started a conversation with me about uh, trying, to do, trying to create a portfolio of images that, that spoke to... Um, spoke to kind of the, the how New York has changed since, since September 11th, because this was going to be the 10th anniversary 
um, since the uh, since 9/11, and uh, wanting to find a way that didn't speak in very didactic terms about New York and um, and but could in a poetic way kind of touch on themes of of uh, remembrance and resilience and uh, and looking forward hope and it was a terrifying project to do because it was like biting off a big chunk that I didn't ever think would be possible to to get my arms around um, and I started reflecting on sort of the idea of of windows and how windows kind of windows are a metaphor for for change for passage for um, you know windows of opportunity windows of possibility this kind of thing um, windows also can can be mirrors they can be barriers uh, they can protect us they can confine us um, uh, many things that are, that windows are you know it's a very obvious metaphor but it also in a very physical way it's how New Yorkers uh, experience the city of New York in a geographic way um, it's all about windows and of course there is the obvious you know connection to um, to the Twin Towers which were brought down on September 11th so I set about making uh, a set of pictures that were tied together by this metaphor of windows and this is uh, this is the work here my, my tribute to Bruce Davidson here This is the, the fence around the construction at Ground Zero. This is a, an immigrant from, a uh, refugee from, from Iraq who now works in a building in Midtown Manhattan. And this is another kind of window, sort of an impenetrable window, but the, the, the geography of, the, the literal landscape has changed in New York with uh, a new, type of security that that has become part of our you know the physical landscape of New York City now is a you know to protect from truck trucks potentially loaded with explosives uh, getting anywhere near uh, the the, uh, uh, the stock exchange new level of visual security throughout the city and this is actually a, a strange window in a in um, a command center in downtown Manhattan, where where the CIA and the police department, and the FBI, all have this this bank wall of video screens monitoring surveillance cameras all over New York City. You know, a couple thousand surveillance cameras. In my mind, this guy is personally responsible for the uh, stock market crash. You know, for the. <laughs> Even the gesture is kind of uh, these are these are new immigrants being uh, being sworn in as as new citizens in the United States and. Even this gesture is like the putting the hand up against the window of opportunity. veteran from the, the war in Iraq. And again, that's my son. And that's it. Thanks.